By the way, they're not safe injection sites. I'm sorry. I used your dishonest language. See, you just repeat the language that is fed to you by the government. Are you a CP? Joe Journal, Canadian Press. Uh, if you can answer in English and French as well. So, on the subject of NATO, why won't you commit to meeting the NATO target instead of saying you would work toward meeting the spending commitment? The difference between being the difference being saying you're going to do something versus working toward or trying to do something. I always say what I mean and mean what I say. I make promises that I can keep. And right now, we are. Um, our country is broke after nine years of Trudeau, who's doubled our national debt, ballooned our bureaucracy, caused the worst inflation in 40 years, driven 25% of our population into poverty, and 25% of our children into hunger. So, as you can imagine, I'm inheriting a dumpster fire when it comes to the budget. So every time I make a financial commitment, I'm going to make sure I've pulled out my calculator and done all the math. Because people are sick and tired of politicians just announcing that they're going to spend money without figuring out how they're going to pay for it. Now, obviously, Trudeau has demolished our military. Um, and my common sense approach is I will cut foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies. I will crack down on corruption, back office bureaucracy, and procurement bungles. And I will use the savings from that to reinforce our military. We will buy equipment based on best value to get, make our money go further, as we did during the previous Conservative government, which re-equipped our forces rapidly, on time and on budget, to fight in Afghanistan. And I will replace the woke culture with a warrior culture so that we can get recruitment back up and running. We can recruit the next generation of soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Thank you. Prochaine question. Eric Andrugy, Globe and Mail. Um, your party hasn't actually said what your policy towards safe injection sites will be. So you want to close this one, but will you close others? What, what, what will you do around safe injection sites across the country? I will be closing them. We will close safe, safe injection sites next to schools, playgrounds, uh, anywhere else that they endanger the public and take lives. We will defund. By the way, they're not safe injection sites. I'm sorry. I used your dishonest language. See, you just repeat the language that is fed to you by the government. Are you a CP? Are you a CP? A CP? Who are you with? Globe Mail. You're with the Globe Mail. You guys repeat the same language you get from the, the liberal, the, the radical liberal NDP activists and bureaucracies. You call them safe. How can they be safe? You think it's safe when a bullet comes flying out of one of these sites to kill a mother in Toronto? Do you think that's safe? You think it's safe to have people using crack and heroin and cocaine ne next to a playground like this? You think that's safe? It's not safe. Supervised injection. What's They're drug dens. They're drug dens. And they've made everything worse. Everywhere they've been done, they've made everything worse. And I know what you'll do now. You'll now go and call the same bureaucrats who caused the, the chaos, and you'll call them experts. The people who caused the 400% increase in drug overdose deaths in Vancouver, you're going to call them experts. They are expert at destroying communities and ending lives, but at perpetuating their own industries, because that's what they are. They are industries that want to expand, and the only way they can continue to exist is by keeping the misery going. So they're not safe. They are unsafe injection sites. They are drug dens, and we oppose them. The Supreme Court has been very clear that you there's not, these radical bureaucrats don't have the right to open these drug dens anywhere they want. The court made it clear that there are reasonable restrictions that can be placed on them, and that includes playgrounds. So, what will so your be? What I'll be, I, I've told you my policy. I'm against the drug dens next to children's playgrounds, schools, other places where people who are vulnerable in the community live. We will defund them. We will not, there will not be a single taxpayer dollar. 
of, from the poly of government going to drug dens, every single penny will go to treatment and recovery services to bring our loved ones home drug free. Thank you. Okay, merci. Nice try. Nice try. The Supreme Court didn't say that. See, I know what you're trying to do. The Supreme Court didn't. I'm asking you your no, I, I'm, and I'm giving you my answer. The Supreme Court did not say that, that, that there can be. It's okay. The Supreme Court didn't say that you can have a drug den wherever you want. It said that there are reasonable restrictions that can be placed to stop them from opening up. In, place, in, in locations that endanger the community or where there is community opposition. That's what the Supreme Court actually said. Now, I know that wacko politicians and the Liberals and the NDP and their supporters in the media want to make it sound like there is a constitutional obligation that we allow these drug dens anywhere they want to go up. That is not true. That is the opposite of true. We have the power under Section 56.1 of the Controlled Substance, Drugs and Substances Act to reject these, these drug dens and shut them down where they endanger the public, and that's what I will do. Sorry. Mike Armstrong, Global News. Just to go back to NATO for a moment, I'm wondering about your reaction to the fairly open criticism Canada came under this week and whether you would feel pressure to meet that 2% uh, target. First of all, it's clear now Justin Trudeau is seen as an absolute joke on the world stage. Um, he was a... The, I was embarrassed to see our Prime Minister treated like a human piñata by the rest of the NATO countries. Um, they look upon him with total and complete ridicule. Um, Canadians are tired of being embarrassed by a Prime Minister who prances around and preens and lectures the world without doing his part. Common sense Conservatives will cut back on foreign aid to dictators, terrorists and multinational bureaucracies. We will cut off back, back office bureaucracy in the Defense Department. We will end the botched procurement that has led to billions of dollars of waste and we will put all of that money into rebuilding our forces and supporting the front lines of our soldiers, sailors and airmen. I would add that when the pre previous Conservative government was in office we weren't hearing these criticisms. Why? Because we were delivering. It wasn't because we were spending more. It's because we were delivering more. We were able to buy equipment off the shelf, quickly put it into theatre and pound for pound do more to fight the Taliban in the most dangerous part of the world than almost any other country in NATO. And so the Americans and our other allies were very grateful that we were doing more than our part regardless of what it financially cost the budget. Now, because Trudeau has wasted so much of the money we do spend, and even, even the money we are putting to work is being wasted and we're not getting the results and therefore our standing on the world is in decline. The other thing he's failed to do that I will reverse is use our resources as a geostrategic force. The Japanese, the Greeks, the Germans have all asked for our natural gas so they can break their dependence on Putin. Trudeau says there's no business case. The Americans have built seven natural gas liquefaction facilities since Trudeau took office. The Qataris have doubled their production. The Germans built an import terminal in 150 days from concept to completion. Obviously, there's a business case. I will be exporting Canada's natural resources, particularly to break European dependence on Putin and turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people.